You're in the trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics. And our draft conversations with Chris Sims continue. We're flipping to the defensive side of the football, and this is where the rubber meets the road, I think, in this year's draft for the Cincinnati Bengals. We're talking about defensive tackles, more specifically three technique defensive tackles with the absence of Larry Ogunjobi, and then edge rushers. You can never have enough good rush guys. The old saying, can never have enough cover corners. That's true. You can never have enough edge guys to pressure the quarterback as well because teams go up-tempo. And boy, in the fourth quarter, when guys are gassed, you need depth at your edge rush position. What will the Bengals do? Chris Sims has opinions. So now, Chris, let's flip to the defensive side of the football. And, and, you know, the Bengals, three years in a row now, have spent over $100 million. The first two years, over $100 million on their defense in free agency, and they addressed offensive needs in the draft. This year, they spent over $100 million on offense with three offensive linemen and a tight end. And you'd think, all right, well, maybe they're going to address defense in the draft because it was just the reverse of it the prior two years. If right. that's the case, let's start with the big boys up front. And the way the NFL is today, you can never have enough good pass rushers because everybody's throwing the heck out of the football. And then with tempo, guys get worn down. Yeah. And in the fourth quarter in some games, it looks like seven on seven. There's no pass rush. If you don't have any bodies, you can rotate in there and roll in there. Right. Let's, let's, let's start at, at, at defensive tackle, particularly three technique. The Bengals lose Larry Ogunjobi. They sign Hill, though. They get sign him to a, to a, a long-term uh, contract, pay him good yeah. money. But you can always use a good three technique. Um, you talked about the pair from Georgia. I think they're long gone. What kind of uh, guy might be there for the Bengals potentially to evaluate at 31? Yeah, it'd be, it'd be interesting. And I know, I mean, Hill and Reader, you guys got a D tackle. That's that's a pretty good crew. Yep. You know, they're not neither one of them's the, like you're talking about, the three technique, create havoc with speed and explosion off the ball. They're a little bit more of the bigger. I mean, Reader's maybe the best run-stopping D tackle in football. He's in that discussion. Yeah, I mean, he's phenomenal. Um, yeah. And Hill, Hill's, you know, got a little bit of a combination of a skill set, but I think more of a run stopper than a, than a, uh, what do I want to say? Just a guy that creates havoc in the backfield. Right. The Georgia, the, I look at both the Georgia kids just real quickly as like they're both top ten picks in my opinion. Right. I think they're off the, they're off the charts good. Both of them. Yep. Why is why is the best three technique in the in the draft that way? I think when we get down to the three technique, you know, end of the first round, I don't know if I see one there that I go that makes sense at that point. You know, I think once you get out of like, you know, out of the two kids from Georgia, the big guy from Connecticut, Travis Jones, yep. who's uh, you know a more of a space eater, DJ reader type, um, then. I think you get into, okay, where do these guys fall? I love the kid from Iowa State, uh, Uzurike. It's a tough name, and I'm sorry. I don't mean to. Ioma Uzurike. Yeah. He's a little bit of a hybrid of everything. I think he could be a three technique. He's certainly athletic and pops off the ball. You know, he can. he's a phenomenal two-gapper to go along with that. But to me, that's the only guy I think I look at to be an end of the first round defensive tackle. I think those top three guys, the two Georgia guy and the Connecticut guy, will be off the board by pick 25. So that's where I look at it. Now you get into the next group of guys. I told right. you about Uzurike, but you get in the second round, you know, DeMar, you know, DeMarvin Leal, Leal from Texas AM, mm -hmm. he could fit that real three technique type of football player. Just win with speed, get off the ball, create havoc, get in the backfield. You might not get the sack or the tackle, but you messed the play up and somebody else benefited from it. I could see that being that type of guy. The kid from Oklahoma, Perion Winfrey, similar type of guy to where I think at the end of the second round, that could be about where he's at. Uh, mm -hmm. So those are two names that certainly jump out to me or three names that I would say that could be in that that spot. All right, let's, let's go to the edge, edge rusher. Uh, and... Um... You know, there's the the Bengals are blessed to have Hendrickson and Hubbard, the H boys. Yeah, who bring it. I mean, they bring it every yes, single they step. They, they're just high motor, high effort, high intensity guys. And the guy that I look at 
in the draft, and I'm not sure he's going to be there, unfortunately, at 31, is George uh, Karloftis. <laughs> yeah. Who is, I mean, he would be an uh, honorary uh-huh. member of the H boys, even though he's a K boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, him, I do you think is there a prayer? Is there a chance? No, he slide to 31. <laughs> no, <died>. no way. <laughs> I don't think so. I hear I you. mean, you know, I, I love the player. You know, again, it's what's not to like about a guy that's six four, two sixty, 260, he throws people around, he can yep. rush the passer. I mean, he can shoot gaps. He's phenomenal. I thought he was better than Ryan Kerrigan coming out of the draft at Purdue. That's who he kind of reminded me of, but I thought mm-hmm. he was a, a better all-around player. So I think he's off the board in the top 20. Yeah. It's a good group. You know, Hutchinson, K- Trayvon Walker, Jermaine Johnson, George Karlaftis. I look at all four of those and go, and they're top 20 picks. They will be gone by then. Now yeah. you get into some guys that could be there at the end of the first. Listen, I don't think it's crazy to think Kayvon Thibodeau will be there somewhere between 20 and 32. Yeah. So would you like that? I don't know. But I, I think, you know, I know I know of a lot of teams that have him as the fifth or sixth rated edge guy on their their team. Hmm. You know, he, he clearly was that to me when I watched him. So he could be there at that point. You know, but there's some other guys there too, and it's just a dependent on you know if the Bengals want to go there uh but I thought this was a pretty damn good group of edge rushers that's for sure if they decide not to go edge rush in 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 round one is there anybody that you think is great value in the second or third round yeah you know I it's hard to figure out exactly how this is gonna you know play out yeah you know you got the David Ajabo right who hurt his Achilles from Michigan he's a good player as an edge guy you know I thought Boy uh, Boye Mafe from Minnesota was a little bit more of a second round guy. I know some people look at him as a first rounder. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe that could be a guy there. I'll tell you another player that I love that I think will probably be off the board though. But is Joshua Pascal from Kentucky? He's a little bit more of like a bigger type of defense end. So I don't know if that's what you'd be looking for. But if you're looking for, let me just throw another idea out there because I know you got good linebackers there. Another guy I really like. Nick Bonito from Oklahoma. Uh-huh. I think he could be one of those guys where, hey, he's stand-up linebacker on first and second down. Hey, it's third down now. Hey, Hendrickson at one DN, Bonito at the other defense, and let's move Hubbard inside to get a mismatch on a guard and whoever else you want at the other D tackle to, to go and rush. To me, he's kind of an interesting prospect. I thought he was a really, really gifted pass rusher and a good stand-up linebacker. So that's a guy I look at. And then maybe a little farther down the road, um, the kid from Mississippi, Sam Williams, he's he's kind of stiff and upright and a straight liner, but his get-off is the best in college football. Nobody gets off the ball faster than this kid. If you want to just a guy to go, hey, line up wide and just run to this point where the quarterback's going to be, <laughs> he's going to be able to do that. He's just got to work on some other things in his football game. What do you think of Ebikati from uh, Penn State? Yeah, I like him too. No doubt. He would have been another name. You know, he's he I'm a little lower on him and the kid from Minnesota, maybe than most. I don't know. Yeah. At least it seems that way when I look out there. You know, I know some people have both of those guys going in the end of the first round. I yeah. didn't think they were quite worthy of that. I thought they were more mid second round, good all around football players, but not the greatest natural pass rushers that I love. So they could be there. And if they was, if he was there in the second round, pick 62 or whatever, that's yeah. another one. I'd go run to the board and just take him. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. At First Star Logistics, we're a very strict company that really puts the pressure on our employees. <laughs> Breaks? What are those? That's what I'm talking about, Icky. Get the body right, then the mind's right. You know, yeah. you know, you gotta get that body right. That's right. right. Yes, sir. <laughs> Become a star with a chance to earn the highest commission percentages in the industry as a freight broker agent. Check out firststarlogistics.com.